What's up, MMA fans? Today we are catching up with Kings MMA leader Rafael Cordeiro. How are you, my friend? What's up, Marcelo? It's always a pleasure talking to you, my brother. Yeah, it's my pleasure, man. Uh, Master Tall, let, let's start talking about uh, Kevin Gaston last weekend. Another great fight, but unfortunately, another great loss. Uh, he lost very close decision to Cannoneer. Now he's coming from a sequence of five losses in six fights. Uh, how do you see? First of all, let me ask you. I could see your face. You did not agree with the results. Tell me about that, please. Yeah, uh, to be honest with you, it's not excuse. We don't like to do excuse, Marcelo. It was a great fight. Cannoneer, he did a great job. But um, in my, in my thought, we won three rounds in this fight. And I believe it was, uh, was different results. In my opinion, it was different results. We put more pressure. If you can see the score after fight, was like uh, Kelvin has more control of the fight, has more punch, throw more punch, throw more kicks, um, attempts for takedown. So we have a lot of things that then make us believe that we won this fight. But at the same time, it's no excuse. So we have to think about the future. I think this is the moment for him, think of his career. He did very well till now fighting against guys bigger than him, which means he does everything right, but at the same time, in the end, we lost. So we have to rethinking what we have to do, but I, my first thought, I think the best decision to do is go for 170. I think if you drop now from 170, it's gonna be great, because if you think about Marcelo, last five, like, like you say, we lost five fights, but it was a split decision, and it was fight of the night. So Kelvin, with his stall, with his size, he fight against big guys, and he still put a great show, put in fight of the night, and lose by little details. The details for me now, what I believe is the way, I believe we have to change his division, we have to go for 170. It's gonna be something fair if he fight 170, in my opinion, because he's gonna fight against guys as same tall as him, as same size as him. Most of the times he fight with guys 6'3", 6'4", 6'5". He's one, he's, 5'8", five, 5'7", five, five, so we have a lot of things to improve, but I believe the first aspect that we have to change is his division. Nice, Rafael. And you have some uh, nutritionist or, or some professional to work with him, because when, when he was in that division, he, he had problems a couple of times to get the right, the right uh, uh, weight in the scale. So what is going to change from now? Let's cut the taco. No more taco. <laughs> no more <laughs> Tuesday taco. <laughs> we want to work with UFC. It's something that we, we want to work with. We want to work with FC. I spoke with Ali. Ali is Kelvin's manager. And we, we're looking forward to hire a great nutritionist or make Kelvin stay, spend some time in Vegas and work in an uh, institute to see if you can do something with UFC. But our first thought was we have to change the vision. We have to go for 170. You want to do whatever it takes to have the victory. You want to do whatever it takes to back for 170. 170, you're going to still strong. Uh, you're going to still drop in people. But the thing is, guys, exact as his talk. Okay, Rafael, let's talk about uh, next Saturday. Giga Shikadze, your, your fighter will face Edson Barbosa in a dream matchup of, for any striking fan. Barbosa told me Giga wouldn't stand 25 minutes with him. Giga said in bjpen.com that he's another technical level than Edson Barbosa, uh, and Barbosa will turn into a wrestler against him. How do you see that fight going? I believe both guys are amazing strikers. Two of the best strikes in the division. This is what I think. Two of one of two of the best strikes in the division with Max Holloway. With um, Max is another beast as well. But I believe this fight is going to be a great fight. Both they like to exchange a lot. They like to, you know nobody want to turn a wrestler 100. percent They want to exchange the beginning to the end. I believe it's going to be it's going to be a great war, and uh, we're going to test Barbosa. So he say Giga probably can handle him for five, but let's see. Because most of the times when you talk too much, we spend a lot of energy outside. And this is my, my advice that I do to my opponent, my 
students all the time. Don't talk too much. Go there, do your thing. We know Giga gonna put a great show there. Giga go there to kill or die. As always, the results, just God knows, but we, we can guarantee war. So Swiss Giga step side octagon, for sure we're gonna test Barbosa skills, um, Barbosa kickbox skills. Let's be tested and it's gonna be a great fight. Who's gonna win, who's gonna lose, it's hard to say, but we know Giga has a lot of weapons to beat Barbosa and you're gonna test, you're gonna prove on Saturday. Rafael, as, as a striker, what impressed you the most about Giga, technically speaking, uh, about his technical, what impressed you the most about him? The time. He has a perfect time. The way he measure, the measurement, and he has the distance. He knows how to control. He has precision on his kicks. He has the Giga's kick, as everybody knows. When he hit, he dropped everybody. He dropped big guys in the gym. So this is the reason I say it's going to be a good test for Barbosa. Barbosa is known as one of the best kickers inside the octagon. Let's see now against another great kicker as well. So it's going to be a great fight. As a Brazilian, you know, it's always a pleasure for me as my boy fights against Brazilian because we know the mentality. And my boys has a Brazilian mentality as well. They came from all over the world. But when they trained with me, he got everything that I learned from shoot boxing, 37 years of martial arts. So they know our Brazilian mentality is about fight. And uh, when they step side Kings MMA, they know they have to go to cure. That is not a big different Saturday. And I believe the fight don't go to the end. Somebody gonna drop before. Don't go to the distance. This fight don't go to the distance and somebody gonna drop before. What about uh, Vettori? He's already has a, a date for facing Paulo Costa Borrachinha, October 23. Did he already start the camp? Yes, he back from Italy two weeks ago, and then I started training hard, conditioning. I already spoke with him. going to be in the training soon. As soon as I finish the interview, I have a training with him as well. He's prepared to do this fight. He's prepared to be a champion one day. He know what he has to do to beat Borshin. Borshin one of the best guys in the world. But at the same time, he has a lot of holes in his game. We're going to work over, see what we can do to beat him and become and have a chance to fight for the belt again. We're going to fight to have a chance to fight for the belt again. And uh, what I believe is going to be another war. And what I believe, the fight will go to the end. Both like to exchange, both like to, you know, to go to the fight. But I believe we have the recipe to be Borrachinha. And uh, this is what we're going to work for. Is it true that Validi called you to, to ask about that fight? Yeah, he called me and then, <laughs> his high was like, a, hey, what's up, Ali? Let's make this fight happen. Hey, I say, man, if you want to fight, you call for the right number. <laughs> Let's make this fight happen. If you want to fight, Ali, you call for the right number. And then we've, I have a good relationship with Ali, as everybody knows. And the respect that I have for this guy, he make a lot, he make the martial arts. He one of the uh, one of the guys that put martial arts in different level as well. Everybody in Brazil respect a lot of Ali. It's not different, but now it's going to be war, Valid. It's going to be war. <laughs> let's put the kids to fight. He called me. I said, man, let's talk with UFC. Let's see. What I, I never decide. I never want to decide what my fight is going to fight or not. Who's decide UFC? We never want to match fights. We talk, me, Valid, but uh, we don't decide nothing. We decide UFC. We can say, you want this fight? I want. You want? Let's make it happen. Uh, it makes sense. This fight now makes all sense. I believe both are going to come hungry. Gonna come with a lot of desire. In the end of the day, just one gonna win. And uh, I look forward, the name's gonna be Mark. Uh, Rafael, talking about Fabrício Verdun, how is he, he doing right now? He got the concussion problem after Renan Problemas fighting PFL. Does he have any plans to, to return to PFL? Or, uh... No, yet, Marcel, because now Fabrício, he start work for Global in Brazil, Canal Combat Brazil. Same show than the, he worked before. He worked, sorry. Fabrício, now he worked in Brazil with Canal Combat. He worked before in the United States. He know how to be a commentator. He one of the best in the world. He know how to get attention of the audience. And he's super happy working on TV now, doing what he did for a long, long time in the United States. And I'm super happy. He opened a, a premium meets in Brazil, one of the best uh, meets house in Brazil. He's super excited, super happy with that. And this is what I think, Marcel. He, in a moment, he has nothing, but he has deal with PFL yet. Some people was asking about Fedor. We don't know in the future what's going to happen. 
but he's still in contract with PFL yet. I don't know. He has a concussion after a problem spike. The doctor said he had to stay a little bit away from, from, train, from training. But now he, I believe he's going to be able to back soon, start lifting weights, start doing some meets, start working jiu-jitsu again. But I believe his focus now is working on TV at Canal Combat and doing his thing in the meets. Uh, what about Mike Tyson, Rafael? Do, do you have some news about him? I, I see your, your Instagram. You always uh, moving pads to him. And is there any plan for him to return? Yes, probably going to fight December or February. We don't know yet. We have three names, Amanda Holyfield, uh, Lennox Lewis, or Riddick Boy. Three names in, in the book. Let's see what is going to happen. And let's see what, who, is, who you promote. We don't know yet who's going to be the company that make that going to make the show happen. But we're excited. I work with him again. we back for one year and a half, Marcel. Since the first train till now, one year and a half working together. He back on track. Do he doing his thing? His commercial media, but he trained every single day. What well, Mike? We have trained 1 p.m. He gonna do all these things. 1 p.m. He gonna be there. He show with 55 with 55 years old. The, the responsibility that you have when you are a champ. You have to have when you want to be a champ, when you are a champ. And he proved me and I learned every single day with him, not just about boxing, but about life. And I believe he proved he can be the best with 55 years old. I have some videos, some new videos from last week. I was looking like, a, my Lord, who is this guy? Man? Who is this guy? And uh, after all, when he stepped and he stopped his train, everybody seen his eye like a man, this is Mike Tyson. The guy, when he go, he move the air, he move the atmosphere, and I'm excited to see his next fight. Rafael, uh, last week, uh, Kyla Harrison got another win, and uh, Chris Cyborg sent some message to her, like, I, 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 can, I can reach the lightweight division, and she answered, Chris Cyborg, uh, you trained Chris Cyborg for all her life, since the beginning. How do you see if that fight happened today? How do you see Chris Cyborg against Kyla Harrison? It's going to be a great fight. Kyla, two times world champ, two times Olympic champ, judo Olympic champ. Chris Cyborg, 30 years undefeated. So it's going to be a great fight. But I believe in the end of the day, the, the underdog is Kyla because it's a new sport for her. And uh, the favorite is Chris for everything that I have done inside this sport. This is a different sport. We have to see somebody put pressure over Kyla. Uh, we have to see Kyla bleeding, see if, how she react at the fights. As the way that Chris showed in the past, how she react. It's important to see because you will just win, 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 win without damage. Like it's not real. Real when you be somebody like a, you're gonna do something, you have to action and reaction. When you have an action reaction, in the end of the day, you're gonna see who is who. In a moment, I believe Chris has a lot of advantage over Kyla. Kyla, because Chris' background was strike first champ, Invicta champ, Bellator champ, UFC champ. We have a lot of things in a, his Chris background is really huge. No disrespect to Kyle, Kyla, but uh, today I believe he's, if this fight happened today, Chris is the favorite. Rafael, I heard uh, you, you, you bought, or you rented or bought a, a house in the altitude to, to, to train your athletes. Tell me about that. Yeah, Marcel, we have the elevation range in the mountains in Big Bear. We just bought a beautiful house there for all those fighters, for our fighters, but for all those fighters as well. As well. If somebody wants to fight in high altitude, they can rent the house, can spend all time in the mountain with, with their teams. And uh, I think it's going to be really good for sport, has this kind of methodology inside the house. So there, you're going to have your food, you're going to have your coats if you want, but we can provide coats, we can provide food. So things like that are going to make the future. So I'm excited. We just bought this beautiful house. It's going to be open for all. If you want to rent a house to train, you're going to have a, you're going to have a house in Big Bear. So this was oh. Fabricio. This was Fabricio's idea a long time ago. This was Fabricio's nice. idea. And then he moved to Brazil. I said, Fabricio, I have some partners here. Let's do it. And I made it. And for example, if a guy from uh, Alpha Mayo, he wants to rent your house, It's open for him. It's open for him. He, the house has four rooms. You can put 12 people there. And uh, have an octagon, octagon, have a cage, half cage, mats, bags. Man, 
right front the sky uh, ski resort, right front ski resort. So if you like to do some things in a, you know, so it's a special house. When I see this house, man, we, we want to do great things here. And uh, thanks, Lord, we made it. Great, Rafael, great news. And to finish, uh, what about OG Talk? I saw a Royce Gracie one you did with Marco Ruas, uh, with many legends of the sport. Uh, how is that? It was great. OG Talk podcast is our YouTube channel. So I'm super excited with that. I can have a conversation with all the guys in I respect. It's all about respect. I like the guys. I talk with people that I respect. I like to show my respect to them. So people respect me. I like to show them who I respect. And then I have a conversation with Marco Ruas, Royce, Vendele, Verdun, Giga, Marvin. So I'm going to have a Kelvin Gastelum. Richard, Wonner, Richard Wilner. Richard Wilner is a, uh, is a lawyer, immigration lawyer. And my last one was with him because he can explain for all Brazil, all people all over the world, how to come to the United States, how to be, if you want to, if you want to come train with us, what do you have to do to be part of Kings MMA, about visa, the, what do you have to do? The ways that you have to do to be, to become American or come visit or train. So I brought him in our last podcast, it was great. In the next one, I was going to be Babalu. So Renato Babalu, we're going to talk about his career, I'm super excited. I'm super excited. It's something different, something that I like to do. I like to talk. I like to talk about life. I like, you know, this is my way to see the life. And uh, what's great? It's a OG Talk podcast on YouTube channel. This is my new baby. Great, man. It's always good to talk to you. It's always good to, to see you doing great in America. Yes, Pleasure, my friend.